So recently, Ferrari have been quiet. A little too quiet. Whilst there's been so much in the news about Mercedes and McLaren and Red Bull and drivers and who could be going and blah, 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 there's not been that much stuff coming out of Maranello recently. And I think this is a good thing and very good news for Ferrari because they've had a very tumultuous last two years and they've been talking big in the press and they've been very public about the failures, but this time they are just keeping absolutely stumm since the halfway point of the season. For Ferrari, right now, no news is good news. I point this out because in the first half of 2023, Ferrari fell way below expectations. We saw various blunders from the drivers and the pit crews and some horrific strategy calls from the team as well. And whilst all this was going on, there were various news stories put out with Charles Leclerc looking very depressed and Fred Vasseur looking a bit lost and Carlos Sainz doing his thousand yard stairs so yeah typical ferrari stuff kind of going on there so overall it wasn't looking very good at all and then the mid-season break happened we saw a slight upswing and then the italian grand prix happened and i think that saw the turning point ferrari where they gained momentum finally got themselves together sorted the car out and they managed to get some confidence around themselves but what I love right now is how with all the other teams, there's all these news and blah, blah, blah happening and all this stuff going on, but there is just nothing coming from Ferrari right now. Nothing big or worthwhile anyway. They're just keeping their mouth shut. They're pressing on, doing the business on the track and slowly but surely creeping up to Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship. There's no big wild statements, no chest beating, nothing. And I absolutely love that from them and i think that is just how ferrari needs to be at this moment they are basically flying on stealth mode under the f1 news radar the second half of the season has been an enormous improvement over the first half and i think ferrari have probably got to a point now where they've kind of accepted this and taken ownership of just how bad things were in the beginning it's also worth pointing out i think that the team principal fred vasseur his different management style and his different approach from doing things because he's not DNA bread and butter Ferrari, his new and different way of doing things is probably starting to take effect and kick in at Ferrari. Creating a better team environment, more harmony amongst everyone involved and just generally more effective and efficient as well. And as an F1 fan, I don't think it matters who you support, but I think everyone wants to see a healthy Ferrari at this stage and I think you can see this when they won at Singapore like you could just see what a release it was for Sainz and the rest of the team on the podium ceremony or even just when Sainz got out of the car at the end his face on the podium spoke a thousand words and it was just a sign that all this change and all this hard work they're putting in is finally starting to pay off Ferrari are now the strongest that they've been all season. They've got the taste of blood in their mouth and now they've got the stumbling and bickering Mercedes in their sights in second place. Ferrari have really sorted out the whole strategy side of the team and reined in so many of these errors that plagued them in the first half of the season. And it was so bad that in the first half, it almost appeared like self-sabotage. And you could clearly see that Leclerc and Sainz were very quickly losing patience. And then naturally murmurs and rumors started where Leclerc was linked to a potential Mercedes seat and then Audi was sniffing around signs for their upcoming F1 project. So yeah, there was lots and lots of talk about the drivers wanting out of Ferrari, basically. You know, both of them were clearly fed up and neither of them wanted to be the band left playing on the Titanic. But now things have completely flipped around and I think it's safe to say that Ferrari might have the most consistent driver lineup on the grid, I would say. They may not be pound for pound the best driver lineup or the greatest, but these guys have worked together for three years and in modern F1 terms, that's quite a long time for a driver pairing. It appears they've got a good working relationship and from Ferrari's attitudes as well, both drivers deliver differently and do different things so it kind of works for them. Sainz is a very fast very safe pair of hands and he seems to work very well with the team and I'm sure no doubt a lot of that he's probably picked up from his dad as well. Whereas Leclerc I would say is more naturally gifted and more capable of spectacular things when Ferrari need him to do something 
but he is also probably more likely to have an accident than signs, I think. But now that the Mercedes door has closed until 2026, Leclerc no longer has one eye outside the team and one inside the team. So he is now kind of realizing that this is the best he's gonna have for a little while now. So he's gonna put all his efforts into Ferrari and what he's doing right now. But with this kind of turnaround, you've got to give an amazing amount of credit, I think, for Fred Vasseur because I don't think what he's done has been kind of covered enough. Before Vasseur arrived, we'd heard reports at Ferrari that there was this kind of, this blame culture and this sort of toxic environment where any slightest error was punished, so therefore no one in the team could really kind of express themselves or have the freedom to do the job as they knew how to do it. And particularly in F1, this is really not a conducive environment to be a winning team because you need to build yourself a strong environment, you have to rely on each other, and you also have to have this freedom and not a fear for having a major bollocking if the slightest, tiniest thing goes wrong. Unlike their recent run of team principles, Fred Vasseur has not come from a Ferrari environment, he's come from elsewhere. So he's been able to have a look at the Ferrari machine that he inherited and he's been able to throw out what doesn't work and bring in kind of what does work from his experience. And I love that. The fact that he came to Maranello, looked at a few things and went, nope, this is rubbish. This is how we're gonna do it now. And there was another Frenchman years ago who did this back in the day and his name was Jean Tot. And look what happened to Ferrari after he came in and did his thing. But from this point of view, Ferrari have really turned a corner because Vasseur doesn't have the traditional Ferrari ways hammered into him. He can draw from his experience at his time at Renault and Sauber and just use whatever worked with them and apply it into Ferrari. So with this new confidence and new outlook and revitalized drivers, by the way, I really think that Ferrari can get that second place in the Constructors' Championship. If they can just keep chipping away and racking up those second, third and fourth places, try and keep the McLarens at bay, and hope that the Mercedes keep running into each other, they are well within a shot of second place behind Red Bull. And with the tiny little bits of news coming in, it looks like 2024 could be a very interesting one for Ferrari because they're building their new car and adopting apparently a very different philosophy and very different kind of build compared to the existing 2023 car. Only time will tell if this is the car to take the fight to Red Bull, but I'd say if there's a time to try something a little bit different or a little bit radical, why not? This is the absolute perfect time because Red Bull, I'd say, have first place pretty much locked out no matter what you do. So why not? Give it a whirl, see what happens. But let's say Ferrari did build this rocket ship for 2024 there will be the inevitable clash, I think, between Sainz and Leclerc, and then Ferrari will might have to look into this and sort out something, come to some sort of arrangement between the two of them. It would be great to see Ferrari fighting for wins regularly again, because out of the bunch, I think they're probably the most likely to at the moment. Mercedes just seem lost and can't get to grips with the fact that they're not dominating everything anymore. McLaren have this inconsistency where they under deliver at the start of the season or the end of the season and Aston Martin are just I don't know depressing but yeah I love what Ferrari are doing what right now and how they're going about it keeping their cards close to the chest not saying anything and just delivering on the track at the moment I think it's absolutely fantastic you know not banging onto the press about any old thing just to get a tiny bit of news out there and not making a big deal about this upcoming fight for second in the constructors. I was shocked actually when I looked at the constructors table after Qatar. I saw the Ferrari were just right up there close behind Mercedes and I thought wow they might actually pull it off. I don't think we've seen the last of Hamilton and Russell running into each other either so there's plenty more points available for Ferrari to scoop up right there. Either way, the run into the end of the 2023 season, I think is gonna be super exciting. We're gonna see some amazing battles and I think we are gonna be really in for a treat because I think all these teams that were kind of having issues such as McLaren and Ferrari and Mercedes, they're all kind of coming together all at the same time. So it's gonna be super, super competitive and yeah, I can't wait to see what it throws up. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm Paul 
and once again many thanks for watching